I, th I, th I think we're in the correct area. I think we're good here. Hey, what's up? Sir Ghost Blur Avenger Senior Cornelius Jr. here. Recently, we've heard a lot of complaints from the locals here that some weird blue creature is walking around and stealing people's chili dogs. He's been harassing the neighborhood, and I cannot stand this. Many people have been calling him by the name Sony. He's been appearing here more and more frequently, so we think we might have a chance to find him here today. Wait, was that him? Let's chase him! Wait, what is this? Anthony Ghost Blur? Wait, what does that even mean? That doesn't even make any s- If you clicked on this video, I'm gonna assume you know what a Sonic the Hedgehog is. Around 1990, Nintendo and Sega were battling for most popular video game company, and Nintendo was winning because they had the recognizable Italian plumber character called Mario. I know that guy! Sega was like, we also need a mascot to keep making sales, and then created this. Which was absolute dog shit, so they ended up making Sonic. Sonic's main gameplay feature is that he's really fast. No shit! So while in Mario you focus on getting power-ups and making sure you didn't die to a gap in the floor or a cheap cheap flying into your hitbox, your main focus in Sonic was to just speed through the end of the level while traveling through the beautiful zones. The Sonic games were a huge success, and they made sure to do something different for each entry in the 2D series. But five years after the release of the first Sonic, game, in 1996, the Nintendo 64 started gaining popularity, and 2D games weren't cool anymore. Every franchise had to step into 3D gaming, or it would get lost in the end of time. Considering Sonic wasn't on the Nintendo 64, and instead on the Sega Saturn, which was remarkably less powerful as the N64, they had to do something. This was not the right thing. Sonic 3D Blast. This game stinks. It's 100 times worse than the previous Sonic games. But luckily, two years later, with the release of the Sega Dreamcast, Sonic's first actual 3D game came out. Sonic Adventure. Because of how fantastic this game was, they quickly also released Sonic Adventure 2. Amazing. Nah, without joking, these two games set a great staple for Sonic 3D games and are still known as two of the best Sonic 3D games of all time. Did they age well? Uh. Then Sega went broke and had to stop producing video game consoles, so they started making their games on other consoles, starting with the game Sonic Heroes. This game is basically the first variant of completing good old Sonic games now in 3D. This game is very fun, but in order to complete the game you have to beat the entire game with different characters four times, and it gets a bit repetitive. But so far, Sonic's transition to 3D wasn't all too bad. <sighs> Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. Also known as Sonic 06. It's a game. This game released on my first birthday. <laughs> it's horrible as glitches, Sonic kissing humans. This is the lowest of lowest Sonic games could ever be. And unfortunately, the next game in the series is not any better. Sonic and the Secret Rings is just an iPad auto runner game, but somehow worse than fucking Subway Servers or or Minion Rush. Just like the last game, absolutely nothing about it is Sonic, besides the fact that Sonic himself is in the game. It takes itself way too serious for, well, you know, being a bad game. The next game, however, Sonic Unleashed, was 
definitely a step in the correct direction. This game greets you with a beautiful opening cutscene, and the normal Sonic the Hedgehog stages are actually amazing. But it's a Sonic game after all, and they had to make sure to make the game unenjoyable in one way or another, so they added Sonic the Were Dog for all the fanfic lovers, and made sure to give him the most annoying gameplay possible. So remember how I said Sonic Unleashed was a step in the right direction? Well, Sega disagreed and decided to continue working on the Sonic being in a very serious world series with the awesome sequel to Secret Rings, Sonic and the Black Knight. This game is also a temple run looking ass auto runner, but now he has a sword. This game blows. But then we got Sonic Colors and oh boy. This game's actually pretty good. It has the lovable, unique stages that everyone knows and loves from Sonic games, now with actual fun new gameplay mechanics, and while being a little short, it's definitely the type of Sonic game people want. And to make it even better, the following year, in 2011, the game Sonic Generations released. And that game is, in my personal opinion, the best Sonic 3D game to this day. The game was focused on revisiting old places in the Sonic universe, with the game being played through classic Sonic in 2D and modern Sonic in 3D. This game has so much content alongside a bunch of side quests to do after the main story, and the stages itself are also remastered fantastic. But don't worry viewers at home, because from this point on, shit fucking blows. Sonic Lost World. Sega was on a good streak and they had to fuck it all up again. This game isn't horrible, it's just not fun and bad. Sega saw the success of Super Mario Galaxy from five years prior and thought, let's copy it, but make it worse. I guess they didn't realize that having a character based on being fast walk around planets with easy to fall holes would not be a great idea. Next game is... Nope. Sonic Sonic Boom. Uh, 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 uh. So after Super Sonic Shithole Galaxy and Sonic Butthair, Sega knew they had to go back to what fans liked. So in the new game Sonic Forces, they returned Chaos from Sonic Adventure, the Wisps from Sonic Colors, and Classic Sonic from Sonic Generations and still ended up making one of the worst Sonic games to this day. This game's only creative gimmick is the fact that you can create your own Sonic character, and okay, cool, fans can finally create their own Sonic fanfic for Sona, but this just does not make the game any better. This game is three f***ing hours long, and half of that time is just looking at these text bubbles. It's emotionless, passionless, and feels once again not like a real Sonic project. But it just can't be more emotionless than this. This was the first trailer for the brand new Sonic 3D game that was announced almost an entire year ago by the name Sonic Frontiers. On first glance, this game looked awesome. I mean, an open world Sonic game? The last actual open world Sonic game that was released was either Sonic Adventure or Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, as I will not count this as an actual Sonic game for the rest of my life. This new game's terrain looks beautiful, with loads of surface for Sonic to run around and explore. Some would even say on similar levels as Breath of the Wild cool. There's just one tiny teeny weeny itsy bitsy problem with all of this. This is not a fucking Sonic game. If you look at this terrain from any perspective, you can see that this does not look like a Sonic game. These early on trailers did not receive a lot of positive feedback, like most early on trainers of Sonic projects, but trailers that came out earlier this year looked a lot better. There was a combat trailer that showed how Sonic could build up a skill set and actually perform unique moves to kill enemies, which made the game look a lot more appealing. And there was also a story trailer that actually made the game feel a whole lot less lifeless. 
Sonic the Hedgehog is a gaming franchise that alongside Skylanders and Super Mario have the most memories in my mind. And every year I just spray on the fact that Sega finally makes a good Sonic game. But it just never happens. But my hope was not completely gone, so I made sure to pre-order this game, and on the day of its release, I quickly biked to my local game store after school and I obtained my copy of Sonic Frontiers alongside a pre-order exclusive steelbook. And so I brought the game home, let's open it, bam, 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 and that's it. What did you think I was gonna do, play catch with it? This is the cover inside, cartridge, and this is my cat, Finny. But before I could actually play the game and capture it, I had to wait a week for my capture card to arrive in the mail. Then this must be the new capture card. Ah, uh, yes, awesome. Fuck. This also took me ages to set up because, well, I'm not the type to be able to do things correctly in life. But eventually I got the capture card alongside the Switch set up to my monitor, and I started my Let's Play of Rayman Legends Definitive Edition. So before I set up the capture card on my own PC monitor, I actually attempted it on the TV me and my brother usually use to play console games. But, uh... It's made by SEGA?! Guys, what should we play, new game or language? I KNOW THAT GUY! Surely they wouldn't do Green Hill Zone again. Yeah. What? Nay. Yeah! We did it! Ugh. Green Hill looking a lot like Sand Hill right now. What if I don't want to rotate the camera? But without further ado, this marks the start of my Sonic Frontiers Let's Play. I also switched over to my PC because, yeah. I went into this game with almost no expectations, whether that is for the good or the bad. God, that was hard. Whew. What I quickly realized is that it probably was a mistake to buy the Switch version of this game. I thought, I collect video games on the Switch, I want the Switch version. But when I saw footage of the games in other consoles, I regretted my decision. Come on, Ninja. Not seeing enough movement here, buddy. The game was very, very easy in the beginning. Not sure if I can complete this one, guys. Ooh, not sure if I can do this one. Oh, this will be useful even though I didn't really understand how to use some of the abilities. No! No. Okay. So to give you guys an idea on how this game works, Sonic is put into a world of nothingness, and our goal is to save our friends. We do this by completing puzzles, going back to old places of the Sonic universe to play stages there, and by fighting enemies and bosses. This game moves very, very different compared to your usual Sonic game, and I didn't know how to feel about that yet. But up to this moment, I was having fun at least. Yeah. This is literally Breath of the Wild Sonic mod. <laughs> yeah. What I did realize, like I said earlier, is that this game to me just feels like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The old dimensions we go to feel like the challenge rooms. You can upgrade Sonic's stats and abilities just like Link can. The terrain feels very similar. The music and sound effects are very similar. Alongside the architecture they use for the ancient buildings. It's just... I know there's a lot of games that have this concept, and it's definitely not a literal copy. Far from it, I just can't unsee it. And I think if they just made Sonic walk around in a place that has way more to do with Sonic and the franchise itself, it'd be a lot more fun and it'd make a lot more sense. So in the first world, you meet Amy and you have to collect Amy's memory tokens. These memory tokens are pink hearts and you get these by running around. I just, I just think, you know, <laughs> killing enemies. and completing puzzles. <sighs> Alongside all this, you have to defeat a bunch of bosses that are just scattered around the map as well.
<laughs> okay. You repeat this process for five plus hours per world. Yep, that's right. There are multiple worlds, but I'll get into that later. Once again, this might just be me, but I personally don't find constantly repeating this process of defeating the same bosses, solving the same puzzles, and grinding the same rails over and over and over again all that fun. But luckily, you don't have to do that. Yo, Big! Big the Cat, a character introduced in Sonic Adventure 1, has returned with its very own fishing minigame. And this minigame is awesome! It's so relaxing with 24-7 lo-fi girl playing on the background while you vibe and catch fish, and a bunch of other things. And the best part about all this is the fact that through this minigame, you can basically get all the resources you need to get to continue the game. And I think that's genius! So I made sure to do my good bit of grinding on this part, but didn't completely overuse it because I still wanted to experience the game itself. Anyways, after getting all of Amy's memory tokens and having collected 6 out of the 7 Chaos Emeralds in order to become supersonic, it is our time to defeat the first boss battle. Feel the power in my soul! Ah! Oh, I'm crazy! Oh my god. Yes. Let's go! <sighs> After my W, I was ready to see what the second world had in store for me. I met Knuckles and then quickly realized that it was the exact same process again. Come on! I get it, the terrain is different now with different boss fights, but I was already getting hella bored of the first world and now we have to do the exact same thing again? This repetitiveness was never a problem in any other Sonic game because they weren't trying too much on being a bigger game than they are. There was nothing to do besides puzzles, enemies, bosses, rails. Puzzles, enemy, bosses, rails. Puzzles, enemies, bosses, rails. Puzzles, enemies, bosses, rails. Puzzles, enemies, bosses, rails. Anyways, after getting lost in the desert and struggling to find a big the cat's portal to save the day i had to fight a couple more boss fights I was ready to take on the second boss fight. With our... What? I clicked the... No, I might... Yes. 
nice quick time event. Okay, I'm ready. 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 Oh, oh, yeah. GG! Two out of five? I've been playing for like 10 hours. All right, we've now come to the third world, and once again, we have to do the same thing thing again, now with the goal of rescuing Tails. This map was very grey, and was feeling more empty and sad than the previous ones already were. But anyway, to put it lightly, I was done playing. This game kept dragging and dragging on, this world looking even worse and less fun than the other two, and with me not even knowing what to do in this world, I thought it was the right decision to put the game on hold for now. Don't worry, I'll continue the game just not for this video. I even did a little rant about it during my playthrough. I know I've been criticizing basically everything so far, but that's just what I do. I shit on anything. But this game had a bunch of positives. Most notably, the throwback stages were a bunch of fun. Maybe because they just felt like they came out of Sonic Generations, but that's beside the point. The game itself was fine, it's better than Forces, it's better than Lost World, it's better than all those other mid-Sonic games. It just wasn't very good in my eyes. The game also isn't comparable at all to any other Sonic game that we've played, and I think that's a negative as well. I bought this game because I like the Sonic franchise, and I'm sure a lot of other people did as well, but in this game, it's just very little Sonic. Like, I know Sega tries to experiment a lot with different kinds of ways to make Sonic work in a world, but now he was just there. The only thing that was Sonic about this was, was Sonic. The small bosses you fight throughout the map is a really cool idea, just like walking around and just seeing bosses and getting triggered into a boss fight. It's cool because all the bosses are really cool for the first time, but when you have to fight them over and over and over again, it gets really annoying. And I think like for 99% of the players, it's a game mechanic that you just wanted to avoid. And I don't think the game creator intended to like make it so you don't want to fight the bosses. I just realized that I've set the term bosses for two different things. You have these small bosses, and you have these big bosses. The small bosses are the ones you can find throughout the map, and the big bosses are the ones you fight at the end of each map. And oh boy, these big boss fights are so good. They are so epic with supersonic just jump up. It's sick. Yeah, the big bosses were a lot of fun and they were extremely hype. That's a good thing. I've only fought the Omega Fortnite skin guy and the Ridley. I know I'm like halfway at the game, it might change, it might completely change, I doubt it, but it could. I'm definitely going to revisit it and give my final thoughts someday, but but not today. Also, cause I'm kind of running out of time. I've been recording this video in like different clips in the span of two months, and alongside me being very busy with school has caused me to not upload in the entirety of November, so I apologize for that. And to make it up for you, I'll make sure to upload two more videos besides this one before 2022 ends. Anyways, yeah, that's what I think of this game. If you disagree with me, fucking tag me on Twitter and debate with me and tell me how much you hate me and stuff. Sure. Thanks for watching, and I will now be crying myself to sleep after finding out that his name is Sonic and not Sony. Go click clap metal on my hip bitch Heavy with the metal money coming by the ditches Fuck it, oh, give me some Heavy hitting drink